Good morning. Today is Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. So Rabbi Barak Lederman tells this story. There was a little old lady and she sold pretzels on a street corner for a dollar each. And every day there was a young man who would leave his office at lunchtime. And when he passed the pretzel stand, he would leave her a dollar, but he would never take a pretzel. Just wanted to give her the dollar every day. This went on for several years. The two of them never spoke. The man would walk by, lunchtime, leave a dollar, walk on. One day, as the young man passed the old lady's stand and left the dollar, as he did every day, the pretzel lady spoke to him for the first time. And without blinking an eye, she said, the price has gone up to $1.50. That, in fact, is a major part of the mitzvah of tzedakah. That the recipient should feel entitled, should feel a sense of dignity in what they are receiving. And in fact, we have in this week's Torah portion, one of the main mitzvahs concerning tzedakah. The Torah says, achicha, And when your brother or sister becomes impoverished in need, umata yado imach, and loses the ability to support themselves in the community, the hechazaktabo, you have to come to his or her aid. Ger v'soshav v'chayimach, it doesn't matter whether they are native, whether they're an immigrant, whether they're known to you, whether they're a stranger, you have to help them. You have to help them survive. The mitzvah is not just to give money or even food. The main mitzvah of tzedakah is to give dignity. The Talmud says, Ein tzedakah mishtalemes el lefi chesed The value of a mitzvah of tzedakah is evaluated on the basis of the level of kindness that is in it, on the basis of the level of dignity that the recipient is left with, not on the basis of how much it is, but on the basis of how much dignity you confer in that act. About 13 years ago, the Federation started a remarkable program here in Montreal called Le Café. Perhaps you participated, as I and many members of ADAF did. It was a response, if you remember, to the downturn in the economy. It was one of the responses on the level of our community. And the way it worked is that every Tuesday and Thursday night, they served dinner. No questions asked. Anyone could come. No charge. And it was a remarkable project. It was in place for a number of years while the need was acute. And I and a group from ADAF would often volunteer there. Now, on the one hand, it was frightening and upsetting because at every dinner there were usually between 250 and 300 people there. All kinds of Jews, all kinds of people Jews and non-Jews, religious, non-religious, immigrants, Montrealers, old, young, children. And to see so many people in need was very, very upsetting. At the same time, it was tremendously inspiring the way that our community responded and still responds, especially in this project the way that people were helped with dignity and with kindness, just as our mitzvah wants us to do. I remember once I was there with a group from Adaf, and I was serving as the waiter and there was an old man who was there and he recognized me. He actually used to daven at Adaf before my time in Utrema. He knew Rabbi Bender, my predecessor's predecessor, the original rabbi at Adath. So he said to me, 
are they paying you? <laughs> so what what? What do you what do you mean? So he said to me, they're paying you weekly, right? Weekly. They're paying you weekly. <laughs> it took me a while to get the joke. I saw a man about my age. He came in. He was clearly in need. And he stood by the door and he left. And then he came back and he sat down and I served him dinner. He did not know who I was. I had never seen him before. So I was watching like I watch everyone in the room while I was serving others. And I saw this man started to cry. So I went over and I sat down with him. And he said to me, I am so embarrassed to be here. I can't believe that I need this. Just a year ago, if you would have told me that I would need a service like this, I never would have believed you. I spoke to him. I listened to him. It turns out that he is one of the descendants of one of the most prominent Adath leaders in our entire history. One of the primary ways we come closer to God is through prayer. And we've spoken about this many times. And we've also spoken about the fact that for some reason, a number of reasons, it is increasingly harder for many of us to connect with prayer, to connect with God through prayer. I have a friend and for a while, he was coming to shul, and it wasn't working for him. He wasn't getting out of it what anyone would hope to get out of that kind of spiritual encounter. And I didn't see him for a while. The next time I saw him was at an event hosted by Mada. Now, MADA is another wonderful organization in our community, serving and delivering food and other supplies, fulfilling other people's needs to those in need, Jewish and non-Jewish. It's an incredible organization. And I and ADAPT, many members of ADAPT, have been active volunteers there for years. So at this MADA event, I saw my friend, and he said to me, I volunteer here regularly. I deliver food every week. And he said to me, this is my shul. This is my prayer. This is how I connect to God. Now, I understand that. Yes, it's true. We cannot give up on prayer. It's too important. We have to continue to look for ways to reclaim prayer for its original intended goal to come closer to God. And we're trying and we'll keep trying. But prayer is not the only way to approach God. And this is true for all of us, but it's especially true if prayer is not doing its job for you if it's not working for you. And if prayer is not working, serve. Serve dinner. Give someone dignity. Because there too, you will see the face of God. And here is one important aspect of how to do this properly. One more time, the Pasuk that we quoted before in our Parsha. Your brother, your sister becomes in need. 
zaktaba. Now we normally translate that is, you shall provide for him, support them. But the truth is, a more precise translation, zaktaba, means you should strengthen them or reinforce them. Listen to what Rashi says. Rashi says, Al tenichuhu sheyered v'yipo. Don't wait until someone, God forbid, has fallen. And then you have to try to help pick them back up. V'yekoshe lakimo. Once someone has fallen, it is difficult to lift them back up. Rather, Ella chazkehu, strengthen them, mishas mutos hayad. Strengthen them at the moment they begin to fall. That's when you can strengthen them and help them remain without coming to need. Sivan Rahav Meir understands this to mean that, you know, it's difficult to see the first cracks. When someone, God forbid, has fallen, we see they've fallen. We want to help them. But we have to look harder because it's easy to miss the first moments, the first lowering of a person's esteem or ability to support themselves or whatever the need is, at the time when it's still possible to fix it relatively easily, to support and strengthen them before they fall. What we need, this Pusik is telling us, we need early detection. And the truth is, this applies in all areas of life. A couple is having a marital problem, God forbid. It's much more helpful and much easier to repair if you get it at the beginning, at the first sign of a problem, a lack of communication, the beginning of arguing, of putting down, when it's still minor, if you catch it then and intervene and get help, it's much easier to correct than if, God forbid, things have deteriorated to the, situa to the level where it could be very, very difficult to fix. The same thing is true with children. If they're having a problem at school or a social problem or a learning problem, to find it and fix it early when it just appears rather than wait till, God forbid, it becomes a crisis. It's so much easier to fix if you catch it early. Just like a physical ailment. It's much easier to heal someone if you start to get the help at the first signs of an issue instead of, God forbid, waiting till it becomes a crisis. And the example that I think is most relevant today because it is so overwhelmingly and frighteningly common is within the area of our emotional health so many people were seeing such a sharp rise today in the number of people who are facing emotional challenges. It's overwhelming in our community. But of course, if we would see someone at the beginning of a struggle, or more importantly, if we would recognize it ourselves, I need help. Instead of waiting until, again, God forbid, it becomes a crisis, if we would see within others, within ourselves, as the cracks begin, and then intervene, and then get help, it's so much easier to get ourselves back on the right track. That's what the Torah wants us to do, to be able to do it in a way that preserves the dignity of the recipient, whether it is someone we serve or whether it is ourselves, to recognize that we need that help now. And when we do, we should make sure that we get it. My friends, I want to wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.